Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over using Docker V2's API to get a list of all available tags for a specific Docker image. Now, back in 2019, I did make a very similar video, but that was using Docker V1's API, which has been now officially shut off as of September 20, 2022. So if we go over to this blog post here, Docker did mention that they are shutting off or deprecating access to Docker Hub V1 on September 5th, 2022. And uh, yeah, it's just no longer going to work. And we're going to update this alias that I created back in 2019 to use v2 of the API. Also, we're going to get a drive by understanding of using the JQ tool, which is a really nice tool to parse JSON output. So the v1 API, it just returned back very basic information about the tags. It was very easy to use tools like uh, TR and awk to get the information out that we'd like. These are standard Unix tools. But the V2 API returns back a lot more useful information. We get things like updated times and digest and all sorts of great stuff. But it does mean that we are needing to parse a JSON output. And we're going to see very soon on the command line when we start you know, hitting their API that it returns back all sorts of information. And trying to parse that using standard Unix tools would have been a little bit too hard. So there is now this external dependency on needing to install JQ. So if you've installed my dot files using the install script, then you already have it because it's been installed by default. It's a really useful tool. I use it for a lot of different things. And uh, if you need to install it, then if you're on Mac OS, you can brew install it. If you're using various issues of Linux, you can just you know apt uh, install it if you're using Debian or Ubuntu, et cetera, et cetera. All sorts of different options here. I'll make sure to leave a link to this one in the description if you want to check it out and follow along. If not, feel free to just uh, sit back and, and see how things work. So if I go to the command line here and we just run dtags, this is the alias that we're going to go over. This is the alias that I went over a couple years ago, but you know, we'll do a quick uh, reminder of how this thing works. So if you run Docker tags alias here on the Python image, then we're going to get a list of all the available Docker tags for that Docker image on the Docker hub. It's going to look for official images, in this case, the official Python image, and give us a full list back here. So now you can just look at this list and be like, oh, cool, like the latest non-release candidate version of Python here is 3.10. Uh, and then, you know, you can pick whatever that you want here, 3.10.7, slim uh, bullseye. That's what I would choose here because I typically don't run release candidates or preview versions in production. And if, you know, it's not limited to Python, right, we can do it for Ruby as well. And you can see also, oh, hey, look at this. 3.2.0 is almost out. So, you know, if you follow Ruby, typically they release the latest stable versions uh, around Christmas time. So in a couple of months now, we might get 3.2. So what we can see here, yeah, the latest version is 3.1.2, whatever. And then we can do this for whatever you'd like, right? Postgres, Redis, whatever, you know, uh, images that you want to get information about. And we can see, oh, cool, there's a new beta version of Postgres coming out fairly soon. Nice. That's how the dtags alias works. And let's take a look here at the code. And this is also in my dot files, by the way. So uh, feel free to check out this path here if you want to take a look at here. And uh, yeah, this is the dtags function here. All it does, it takes in one argument, which is the image that you want to look up. And we can see we pop it in here. And uh, yeah, we're just using curl in silent mode because we don't want to see curl's actual output. And this is the Docker v2 API endpoint. And uh, yeah, we don't need to log in or do anything special to get this information here. We can see, you know, registry.hub.docker.com, v2, uh, repositories, library. So the official account ID for the Docker Hub is uh, called library. So this is actually like literally the account ID to get something like the official Python image or the official Redis image or whatever. You know, if you were trying to get images for your account ID, you'd replace library with, you know, uh, whatever your account ID happens to be. But this alias is very focused on just getting uh, official images here. I didn't make it super generic because, you know, if you go down that path of making it like super generic, then it's like, well, yeah, sure, we can make a second argument here that maybe defaults to library if you don't set it there. But then it's like, well, you know, maybe you're not using the Docker Hub. Maybe you're using a like, different Docker registry. And then it's like, well, okay, cool. We need to customize that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it becomes uh, this big convoluted thing, which is not bad if that's what you want. But in my case, it's I just care about the official images because those are the ones that I use. And uh yeah, we can see we're using JQ here. We're gonna like break down this command and run it manually and don't worry about that. I just wanted to give you a high level overview of how this basically works. So we get the API response. It comes back as a huge uh, JSON response. We use JQ to parse it. And then we just sort it to make sure that uh, things are, you know, reasonably sorted by default with the newest ones on bottom, at least according to sorts version sort. And again, we're gonna see how this stuff works in this video. But yeah, let me just go and maybe copy, copy this whole command here. And we'll just start running that on the command line. It's gonna be a little bit easier. And yeah, I don't want to use image here. Let's just go with, I don't know, uh, Python, right? Why not? Uh, that's the only variable that I need here. Run that. Boom. Done. Okay. So now we can start breaking this down and just see what we get back. So, you know, going back to what I was saying before here, you know, imagine running this back and trying to parse all of this out without using a tool like JQ. So we just have a massive... Uh, list of results. And then inside of that, there's a dictionary of many different things, like when was the last tag pushed, like the name of it and all this other stuff. And just trying to parse that with like TR and awk, like, 
no, thank you. So JQ makes this uh, really nice. Actually, JQ is really cool because if you just have it installed and you don't do anything, it'll turn that mess that we just looked at there uh, to something that's very human readable. You know, I don't want to call it a mess, but it is what it is, right? Uh, just massive string of JSON. But now I'm trying to find the top here. I maybe hit the up arrow a million times here. Holding page up forever here. Wow, that's a lot. A real lot. Like way longer than I thought it would be. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, probably should have this a search for curl or something. I would have found it. But yeah, there we go. We can we can see what we get back. Well, we, we have 2040 different available uh, Python tags here. And we can see in the results here, we have an array. And we have an array of what? Array of objects. And we can see that, uh, yeah, somewhere down here is the actual name. So this is latest. And we have the next one. The next one is going to be uh, Buster. And, you know, we keep going on and on and on and on. But all we really care about here is we just want to get this name out of that list of results. So that's what JQ is going to help us do. So going back to this original command that we ran here, if we break it down a little bit here and get maybe get rid of the name here, we can say that, you know, we just wanna get a list of all the results here. And uh, yeah, that's gonna give us all uh, each individual object here. And inside of this object, what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna pluck out just the name component of that. So with JQ, you can do, uh, let me go back to here. You can say, okay, great. Like, I just wanna get the name out of that. Excellent, done. And now we just have the name. And going back to here, you know, if you wanted to get something else, then let's just say that you wanted to get, I don't know, like the last updated time or something like that. You can you can do uh, last updated like that, and then you can get the last updated time. Now, I don't wanna go hardcore into JQ because maybe uh, I will make a future video about that one, but you can get multiple columns as well. Like if you wanted to get the name and the last updated, like separated by a space, like there's all sorts of things that you can do here. And, uh, but, you know, once we have that full command here, you know, the last thing that I do here is I just sort it with version sort, because if we don't do that, then we're gonna get the sorting that we just get back from the Docker Hub, which I don't know exactly offhand uh, how it sorts it by default. Maybe it's the newest ones on top. No, because then 3.9 and 3.11 is newer. Yeah, I don't know, but that's why we're using the sort command here. Uh, let me also clear that just so we can see everything on video. There we go. So version sort. So version sort is just uh, a flag of the sort command that, um, yeah, we can just see, I think it's dash V or something. Yeah, version sort. Natural sort of version numbers within text. So what's nice about that is that, you know, some of these tags, they have text uh, as well as it's, you know, not just version like one or eight or seven or something like that. You know, it's 1.13.4 or, you know, something with a some buster at the end. So this version sort will do its best to try to figure out like what should come last. Now, you know, it can't really do anything with like Windows Server Core, like, you know, it's just alph alphabetizing that stuff. But at least the version numbers like, you know, 3.7 and then 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, 11, blah, blah, blah. You know, it does do a great job at figuring out what to do there for the sorting. So yeah, that's basically how all of that works here. And if you wanted to experiment a little bit more with Docker V2's API, there is uh, an API reference over here. This is basically how I figured out, like what is that API reference that we need to do to get the list of tags? So this is actually uh, the exact endpoint that we're hitting here. So we're just going to repository and then uh, just getting tags of that here. So yeah. Uh, we can see here too that we get the page size, the default is 10, the max is 1000. And we also just get, uh, you know, page number to get is defaults to one, you know, if you wanted to get page two, three, four, et cetera. So what I ended up doing here was I just set the page size to a thousand because I have not really seen too many Docker images where that count is higher than a thousand. Uh, that Python one had something like, what was it like 2040 or something like that? I'm not gonna scroll up too far, but I think it was 2040. Yeah, there we, there we go, we can see the counts. but you know, just getting the, the latest thousand here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's like literally the latest thousand, but we do get all the ones that matter. So I've never encountered a situation where using a thousand, like we still needed to paginate over the next thousand or something like that. So yeah. And also I actually think that that thousand might not be correct. So if I rerun this command here and we do a word count on that, we can see that we are getting a hundred of these back. But if I change this, or if it's a thousand, we should have gotten technically a thousand of them back, right? Uh, I don't know what's up with that. And I do know if you put in something like 95 here, and if I source my Z shell, nope, config Z shell, alias file, I need to reload it basically. Well, I don't know why I did that. Well, yeah, well, hold on, let me re re run the actual alias here. Uh, we did this what on the Python one, and then this should give us back 95, right? Cool, it works, right? But if we put this back to a thousand, or sorry, a thousand here, and source that aliases file and rerun, 
we only get 100 back. So I don't know what's up with the Docker Hub saying that it maxes out at 1,000. We did see that the Python image does have 2040 as a count, but yeah, for whatever reason, Mm, it seems to be maxing out at 100. Maybe this is a bug with the documentation. I'll actually bring this up with Docker. So I don't know. I'm not trying to brag or be weird about this, but like I am a Docker captain. Uh, that, that That's like a, you know, a title that Docker gave to certain folks in the community. I didn't like self-impose that one. But yeah, I have like basically an inside scoop with uh, certain things about Docker. I can contact their developers and engineers and product managers and et cetera, et cetera, and just see uh, what's up there. So yeah, I'll try to get an answer to that one. I'll leave a comment if anything rises from that in case maybe the maximum really is 100, not 1,000. But yeah, that's basically going to do it Do it for uh, this video here. Again, you know, if you wanted to play around with other API endpoints, you can see all sorts of stuff here in their docs. I'll leave a link to this one in the description as well. With that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. If you have any comments, comments about any of this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.